For those of you that don't know what the MS-1 is, this is actually the predecessor to the SP-202. So the MS-1 was released in 1994, and four years later, the dot to sample SP-202 was released. So what I wanted to show you guys today is that I genuinely am starting to feel that the MS-1 is a more useful sampler to have in the workflow than the SP-202. And there's a few different reasons what I've got for that, which I'm gonna explain in this video. So let's start by talking about the sample grades on this device. Now, interestingly, just like the 202, the MS-1 has four different sample grades, and I can go into this area here and show you guys. So it's kind of like a global sample grade. You've got long two, long one, standard, and high. So very similar to the SP-202. On the SP-202, you've got hi-fi, standard, lo-fi one, lo-fi two. So those lo-fi one and lo-fi two are basically named long one and long two on this device. Now, the first thing that I want to say about these is that I personally think, and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be saying in this video is down to personal taste, but I do actually personally think that the sample grades on the MS-1 are a bit more usable. Now, on the 202, Hi-Fi doesn't really get used because if you're using these kinds of devices, you're probably looking to get that lo-fi grit. So Hi-Fi is out the window. Standard is pretty much the sound of long two on this device. So if you imagine between hi-fi and standard on this device, there's a few other sample grades like long two and standard. That's what the MS-1 kind of sounds like. Then with the 202, you've got these even more extreme lo-fi one, lo-fi two settings. I personally don't find them that usable, uh, only probably for like one shots if you want to really, really dirty those up. If you apply Lo-Fi 2 to a sample, for example, it just completely destroys it, in my opinion. And one of the problems with it is it takes away too much of the low end. So you're losing a lot of that depth. So if you if you apply that to a sample, you're going to lose a lot of depth in your overall in your overall B. So that's one of the reasons why I tend to sway away from Lo-Fi 1 and Lo-Fi 2, unless I'm doing it on one shots like snares and hi-hats and kicks. Yeah, particularly good for drums. Um, but generally speaking, I'd probably stick to standard if I was using the, the SP. So the fact that this has got four grades down to standard, to me, just makes it a little bit more usable and doesn't ruin the sample enough. It just adds this kind of nice, mellow sort of sound to your samples. And I will do some demonstrations of that. So I'll just show you quickly here. And one problem that there is with this device, actually one of the limitations, is if you sample in at a certain grade and then try and increase it, it actually speeds up the sample. So all the samples that I've sampled in, in this particular session are long two and I'll show you those now. This is the drum loop that I sampled. Okay, and these are some chops that I've got in here as well. So if I bump these up to hi-fi, You can hear that it's kind of added a crazy amount of speed to it. Interestingly, if I just go to standard, that loop has been pitched so nicely that it could probably be used for some sort of dance related thing or maybe even a jungle track. So when you're sampling in, you do have to sample in at the one that you want and that is gonna keep it at the right tempo. And then you can use the pitch obviously to change. You've got 20% minus and you can go all the way up to 10% plus as well. So there's quite a nice range on the pitch there, which I really enjoy using it as well. So yeah, generally speaking for that point, all I really wanted to say is that the sample grades on the MS-1 are a little bit more usable than, I, than they are on the 202, I think. Again, personal opinion, but I just prefer the sound of it. And I think you can process with this quite effectively and it doesn't reduce too much of the fidelity of the sample and it, it keeps it nice and warm and, uh, and keeps that depth that you need when you're making a beat. Okay, so the next point, and this is to do with editing samples that you have in the device. Now, when these are being used as processing units, it doesn't necessarily matter too much about getting the start and end points bang on because most likely you're gonna move this to a different piece of gear and then you can do all the work in there. But just as a point, I think it is really nice that on the MS-1, you can actually edit samples, start points and end points numerically. So instead of having to use the marker on the SP-202, which is one of the most infuriating features if you're trying to get the right start point, if you're trying to nail on that start point and trying to hit mark as, as accurately as you can, it's just not an intuitive way of working with samples, basically. It's very, very primitive. So the fact that you can go in here, so say if I select this drum loop, and let's just make sure that's on the right sample grade again. 
okay and I can go into edit sample here at the top you can see there's like an edit area I go into sample and you can do loop point you can do start and you can do endpoint. You can do those numerically. You can see I've already got this set up. I've got that on 2002. So it's a bit like the MPC in that respect that you can go in, set a numerical value, and that's going to move the start and end points. And it just feels a little bit easier than trying to use the mark on the SP202 and get that exact point right with the mark button. You can't do any fine adjustments. On the later SPs, you can, as of the 303, you have a start and end button, and you can do tweaks using the dials, which is a lot easier. Um, but as a direct comparison between the 202 and the MS1, I just find this way of doing things a little bit easier on the MS1 and a little bit more accurate. So that's another tick in the box for the MS1 in comparison to the SP202. Okay, the next thing is that this MS1 actually comes with a built-in sequencer. And by sequencer, what it actually is really is just a looping device. Now, although it's very primitive, it has got a use which I really like. I definitely wouldn't be using this to make full beats. But what I would do is use it to sketch out ideas and then get a rough idea of what a beat sounds like. And the reason why that's going to be so useful is it's quite time intensive. Once you've got all the samples into a device like this or the SP202 and you like the sound of them and you want to export them all out to another device, maybe it's your computer or maybe it's an, an MPC or an SP404 Mark II, that's quite time consuming doing all that. So you kind of want to have an idea that you're on the right tracks with a beat. So with the pattern sequencer, what you can do is go into it and I've got four sequences available here per bank and I've already used one and two. So I'll go into three and it just flashed up there saying there's no sounds in here. And this is so easy to use. So I'll do record and it will wait now for me to start a loop. And I'm just going to jot something down very, very quickly. Okay, so it's not the most intuitive thing. It will loop at exactly the point you stop recording, but it's just so good to get that idea down and know that you're on the right track. So if I go into sequence three now, and you can see here the sort of sub function of each of these buttons relates to the sequence area. I've got sequence one, two, three, and four on one to four, and then five to eight, I've got the controls back to start, stop, play, and loop. So I'm on three, let's press loop and listen to that back. So you could hear that a loop point was way off and I don't personally know if there's a way of adjusting that or not. If there is, that would be great. I'm going to have to look into that more closely, but as a way of just quickly sketching down an idea and trying to understand whether it's actually going to work and whether it's going to be worth the time of exporting all these samples, it's just super, super handy for that. So you could see how quick that was to lay that down as well. You just literally plug it in and then when you're listening to it, you can just purely concentrate on the sounds. Now, you can do that with the SP202 if you just play the buttons physically, but I think when you're doing something physical and trying to listen at the same time, it's not quite as useful because you're concentrating on so many different things. So it's nice just to be able to hear the audio on its own, looping round, and you can get a good idea of whether or not it's gonna become a good beat if you do some more work on it. So really, really like that about the MS1. There's nothing like that in the SP202. There's no looper, there's no sequencer. You have to use MIDI if you wanna sequence these sounds, but this has got that built-in looper and that's really handy just for jotting stuff down. Okay, the final thing, and this is probably the biggest point about this device, and it is the reason why it seems to be almost replacing my SP202 at this point in my life is because the sample grades that are available on this device are available to be used as a through effect. And what that means, if you're not familiar with that term, is basically if I pass a signal into this using the input here and run it out to say a recording device with the output, the signal will be running through it. So the reason why you call it a through is because the signal's coming through and you can apply that effects to that signal. The audio doesn't have to be inside the unit. It doesn't have to be recorded onto the unit in order to take advantage of that particular feature. So with the SP202, you have to sample in a sample into the memory before you can hear what the sample grade sounds like. With the MS1, you don't have to do that. You can just put a signal into it and then listen to it directly and you can change the signal and you can hear the effect of it. So I'm gonna to have to reroute some of the cabling here, but I wanna show you this because this is one of the most powerful things about this unit. And it just means it's such a good master effects unit because you can make entire beats, say in Ableton, which I've been enjoying doing recently. I can run that beat into this and I can hear straight away what it's going to sound like. And then I can record that out 
either back into my computer onto another device and it just makes the process much much faster and it means i can use it as an external device with the sample grades whereas i can't do that with the sp202 uh, but yeah the fact that you can do that on the ms1 it's just an absolute game changer it's a huge time saver and it's basically just like having an effects unit that you can plug into and listen to sounds and change the sample grade so it's not quite as good as if you actually physically sample it into the memory of the device but the fact that it's close and it saves you so much time it just makes it that you you basically are going to end up using that instead of actually recording stuff in. So I'll quickly reroute this wire in and hopefully I can show you some beats and show you the different sample grades working on it live and you can get an idea of why I think this feature is just so goated on this device. It's absolutely awesome. So let's give this a go now. A few moments later. Okay, so I've got this beat ready and I've actually been making some beats with my new pack, which is coming out very soon. This is gonna be Hip Hop Drums Volume 2. All the drum sounds in this are chopped from real drum breaks. So there's a really nice crispy sound to them. And I've been having some really, really good results with these over the past couple of weeks. So I can't wait to get this pack out to you guys. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is just play this beat through the high setting and then in order to listen to that back what i have to do to go over to monitor this sound is go to the pitch area so i'm going to go ahead and do that now and play some of this beat on this particular standard of recording Okay, so you get the idea with that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight to long two now. And the reason why I'm gonna go straight to long two is because I really want you guys to hear the difference between high and long two. I want you to hear the full scale basically of how high fidelity a sound can sound and how low fidelity a sound can sound. So this is what that same beat sounds like on long two. And like I say, I'm not having to record this into this unit. I can just listen to it as a through and it's so nice. And again, with the magic of editing, I'll put those two side by side so you can really hear how they sound next to each other. And yeah, the long two sound just sounds absolutely amazing, putting on the top of four beats like that. So that is it for this one guys, I hope you found this video useful, that was the MS1 and I really do think that this is a good alternative to the SP202, which is very odd to say considering it as this is the predecessor and it's four years older. The SP202s are getting really expensive now because they've got kind of a legendary status in the lo-fi beat making genre, but I really do feel that this device gives it a good run for its money, so maybe if you can pick up one like this a little bit cheaper. You can see all the advantages that I've just said in this video and it may serve you better. So leave a comment below. If you're a 202 user, would you consider swapping it for an MS1? Do you think those features that I've mentioned are better and more useful? I'm really interested to hear your thoughts about that. And just quickly before I leave as well, guys, don't forget to check out my website, spvids.com. Basically, there's loads of different things you can buy from my shop that keep me doing what I'm doing here. I've got beat packs, t-shirts, hats, skins for the SP4 or 4 Mark II. Go and have a look and see if there's anything that tickles your fancy. It keeps me making these videos and I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for coming this far and checking out this video. I'll be back with another upload very soon. <laughs>